Hello and welcome to another day of Advent of Code. We're back for day 14. Uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so we're gonna start with parsing today. Uh, the input is this polymer chain and a bunch of patterns. And these patterns indicate how insertion is supposed to work. So if we look at our input chain, uh, there are going to be a bunch of pairs. So we have like NN and then NC and then CB. And we use this mapping here to figure out how to insert characters. So if we're just looking at this manually, we start with NNCB. Uh, the next iteration, we find whatever the pair is for NN, which is C here. So we're gonna end up with NCN. Then we look at the next pair, uh, NC, which is, where is NC? Uh, here, which means we insert a B. So we have NBC. And then we look at our last pair, which is CB, and we're inserting an H. So we have C, H, B. And so that's kind of how our transformation is going to work. Now, in part one, uh, it asks us to do 10 days of iteration, and we can do this manually, but, oops. But in part two, it asks us to do 40 days of iteration, which is gonna make a string that's gonna be way larger than your, your computer's memory. So we're just gonna jump to the, um, the faster solution. Uh, I actually did the slower solution when I solved mine uh, and then adopted or adapted to the fast solution, but we're just gonna jump directly to the fast solution and explain kind of how it works and go from there. Uh, but let's do the parsing first. So first thing that we wanna do is get the string and the other parts um, uh, split apart from each other. So we can do input s dot split on new line, new line. That'll split on this blank line here. Then we want to parse these into some sort of mapping. Patterns equals this for a line in rest dot split lines. And we just want to map those in. Source dest equals line dot split on this arrow. And patterns source equals dest. So after that, we should have um, all of those hooked up. And we do. Cool. Okay, so that's our parsing out of the way. Uh, now we need an efficient way to represent these and move them forward. And so I actually thought a little bit back to the, oh, what problem was that? The, um, one of the fish, the fish problem, where uh, instead of representing the full sequence of things, we can just represent it using a counter. And so we're going to use that same strategy here. Uh, but instead of, uh, in that one, we were representing individual characters. In this one, we have to represent overlapping pairs. So we'll have NN, uh, NC, and then CB represented as our pairs. And so let's parse that out. I have already imported collections because we're going to be using a counter for that. Uh, so we can say pair counts is equal to collections.counter. And we want to basically get those individual slices out of here. And the way I did that was for i in range 0 to len s minus 1. And then I just grabbed two character slices out of this. Pair counts s i to i plus 2, I think it is, plus equals 1. Let's actually just print that out and make sure I didn't lose that. Print pair counters. Uh, pair counts. I can spell. And then NC, CB. Okay, cool. So we have split up our things into pairs. Uh, now we just need to do this 10x iteration loop uh, for this in range 10. Uh, and the way I did this is I made a new counter and then just updated it based on the inputs. You could probably do it in place, but it's a little bit easier to do it this way. New counts equals collections.counter uh, for kv in counts.items. The trick here is when we have one pair, this NN pair, we're gonna insert a character into it. So we insert the C into it, which is gonna create two pairs. It's gonna create an NC pair and a CN pair. And so we can do that, we can update that in our new counters based on this. And the reason that I'm separating the two is the problem says they all happen at the same time. So there's no overlap. We don't wanna double count anything. Uh, okay, so we need to put those two new pairs into here. And so new counts, uh, and we're gonna use an F string. We're gonna take the first character of our key and we're gonna take our output of that key. 
and we're gonna add V. That's our first pair. The second pair is going to be the third character. So, uh, or the third character, the second character. So this will update our patterns inside this new counts. And after that, we wanna do counts equals new counts. Uh, and at the end, we'll print new counts. So this doesn't quite get us our answer. And this is where I got pretty stuck on solving this problem. Oops, counts, right. Uh, new, call it pair counts, yeah. Uh, where do we see? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is where I got pretty stuck on this problem. So this doesn't actually help us that much with the answer, but it helps us with our intermediate state. Uh, and the tricky part is figuring out how to get to the answer. So uh, these these counts actually double count all of the characters, all the characters except for one because of reasons that I'll show you in a second. Uh, so even though there's 812 BB pairs, this B overlaps with some other B inside this. It might be part of BN, it might be part of BC. It's basically impossible to know. Uh, so you have to use a different strategy for figuring out the actual counts of the characters. And fortunately, we can take advantage of this insertion here and knowing that when we're inserting here, those are representing the characters in our final output. Uh, and the way that I did that is I only considered these first two characters as being inserting. And the reason for that is if we look at our string, every time we insert something, we're always insert, inserting between these two characters or between these two characters or between these two characters. So the last character and the first character are always going to be the same. They are never going to change. And so what you can really just consider is the first half of our, of our pairs, so the NN part, the NC part, and the CB part. Uh, you can just kind of treat those as the characters that matter and the insertion characters after them that matter and leave out the last character because uh, otherwise you would double count the end character. But then you have to add back one for this last character at the end. So we can do that uh, here before we reassign these pair counts. So we can say, I'm gonna call it counts two, uh, and this is gonna be our actual, uh, we'll, call it, we'll call it care counts. This will be our real count of the characters after each step. And for that, we are going to use, oh, actually we have to indent, Pair counts equals collections dot counter. Uh, and we need to do this every time we do this insertion here, but we're only going to do it for these first two characters. So care counts uh, k0 plus equals v and care counts patterns k plus equals v. And once, once we have added those two in there, uh, those will have the right values. And we're just going to compute this at every rate or at every iteration. You probably don't want to do this in, in reality, but the code is simple enough that we're going to do this. Uh, realistically, you would only want to compute this on the last iteration because, um, yeah, the the computation we're just we're just throwing away this value except down here. Now, if you do care counts at the bottom here, uh, you'll see that we have seventeen forty eight, which is actually off by one. And this is where another the, the other part comes into the problem. So I was talking about how you know we count the first two characters of these. We need to add back in the, this last character because it did not get included because uh, it just remained constant the whole time. So we have to do care counts uh, s minus one. So get the last character of s and add one. So that'll get us so that we're no longer off by one. So now we have seventeen forty nine and 161. And then the last part of the problem is diffing those two numbers and giving the result. And the way I did that was just by sorting the values. Vals equals sorted care counts dot values and printing vals minus one minus vals zero. So the largest one minus the, the um, biggest one. And that'll get us 1588, which is our expected for part one. And then part two is simply just changing, oops, simply just changing this from 10 to 40, which gets us this, oops, I pasted this number, uh, which is what we expect. Cool. Anyway, that's day 14. Uh, hopefully you were able to use counter similar to the other problem. I'll link a video in the description about counter. So if you want to learn more about that, you can. Uh, but thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.